Hi right, folks, welcome along to the vlog. This isn't a proper full blown vlog, but I've just been editing the one where we went to the town hall to set up the bar for, um, for Remember It's Sunday. And at the end of it, because we had to repackage some beer from a cask into a keg, at the end of that video I did quite a long talk on how you would tap and vent and serve cask beer and I thought if I kept it into that video which was already approaching 20 minutes long it would be far too long so instead here we are we've got an extra vlog out of one day's filming and we're going to put this in as a separate bonus vlog if you like so you will you may have seen a little bit of this footage already but in order for it to make sense uh, I'm going to overlap what you've seen from the Remembrance Sunday vlog and the footage that I cut out of it so anybody who hasn't seen that previous video will kind of get the gist of what I'm talking about and then it'll just finish at the end so I'm not going to come back and do an outro or anything like that so here's me talking in depth waffling somewhat about how to tap and vent a cask and the different ways of doing it enjoy so we managed to get a 30 litre keg out of this cask and a 5 litre mini keg which I'll take home for myself tonight and then there is definitely some beer left in this tank which I don't really want to see go to waste so we'll just take the hop filter and uh, spout off and while you're here, I could probably tell you a little bit about dispensing cask ale. So this whole mechanism that the cask is sat on, this is what's known as an auto tilt. So this has a spring at the back and when we put a full cask of beer on there, it sits down under its own weight and as the beer gradually leaves the tank, when it's served, it slowly pushes the back end of the auto tilt up into the air, as you can see the angle that it's at, meaning that you get most of the beer out and there's a little section for the yeast sediment to deposit itself in the bottom there. When we open one of these casks, we have to use a special tool, but I think Stuart's taking it back to the pub at the moment, so it's not here for me to show you, but it's basically like a punch. And what we do is punch a hole into this top piece of plastic. This can be wooden or plastic, and this is called a shive. We generally go for plastic ones these days for hygiene reasons. And the idea with this is we want to vent the excess CO2 out of the cask before we put a tap into the front to get the beer out. Otherwise, the amount of pressure that's in there may blow that tap out of your hand once you open it. You've all seen the videos before online, I'm sure. So what we advise customers do when they receive one of our casks of beer is to put it on the stillage at least a day before you want to open it because it's going to be shaken up from delivery, of course. But you can do it within an hour if you're in a rush. And then once you've done that, you open it here, then you can either let the cask breathe or right away with a mallet put in your cast tap and then if there's any disturbance from that activity then it's got time to settle and once you've tapped it then we recommend waiting until you don't see any activity on the top spile you can put wooden spiles this is called a race spile but you can put wooden spiles in here they're made out of either cane or hardwood the cane ones allow the beer to breathe and that's what you'd have in there while you were drawing the beer off. Or the hardwood ones are what's known as hard pegging. So if you're serving this on a Monday and there's still beer left in there Monday night, you put a hard peg in, effectively sealing up the cask. And then tomorrow on Tuesday when you come to serve, you put the bamboo spile back in there to allow, allow it to breathe while you're drawing off beer. Because you don't want to cause a vacuum and glugging of air through the tap. So we've tapped the top, 
or we've punched a hole in the shive, we've put a spile in, we've put a tap in, now we're going to let the whole thing sit for a couple of days, like I say, until activity either calms down on here or until the tapster or the barman, the cellarman, takes a sample of beer out of here, assesses it in the glass, has a look, tries it to see if indeed it is ready to be served. And then you can serve it. There are many ways you can serve beer from a cask. We go via a beer engine, which is a hand pull, vacuum operated system that's sat up in the bar uh, with its own little sparkler on it to give you a head if you want a head. But uh, you can also just serve it directly out of this tap, which I'm gonna be doing shortly into that glass. If though you are connecting up to a beer line, then you're gonna need a nut and spout, which are these two items here. And then you'll need what's known as a hop filter. So if you connect the nut and spout to the tap without a hop filter, it will leak. There's no gasket or grommet or seal in there. And if you look at the hop filter, not only does it have a stainless steel fine mesh on there to catch any particulates, but it also has a silicon stroke rubber seal, which aids in the, uh, the sealing of the nut and spout to the tap. So there we go, that's a brief rundown of cask ale and how it's served. Traditionally, cask ale is served at around 11 degrees and uh, you can serve it colder but in the UK that's where generally where where we set our cellar temps because historically it's believed that the heat or the warmer serving temperature allows the flavours to be more pronounced in the beer again it's all personal preference in my experience but uh, the carbonation on these beers is quite low as well. Just a little bit of condition in there. You don't want to see a fizzy cask beer. Uh, but I do find, we're not having the cask and keg conversation, but I do find that sometimes a colder keg beer with some carbonation is nicer on a hot summer's day. This is nicer on every other day, quite frankly. And the little bit of CO2 that you get in a keg beer, I find brings out the aroma of the beer better but the coldness doesn't necessarily enhance the flavor. So that's why serving this at 11 degrees is sometimes good for the flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead now and pour a beer from the cask, provided there's any left in here. I can't guarantee that. And I think it's also been tapped today, so it may be just a little bit lively. I'm not sure yet, we'll see. And if it's not lively, then I'll manipulate the glass somewhat to try and give it a bit of a head. So let's open her up and have a look. Now we can see that, yeah, there's some condition in there all right. And this doesn't need manipulating, as they say. So look at that, folks. That's what we call, it's not from the wood, but traditionally it would be known as beer from the wood. And look how clear that is. Isn't that just wonderful? So this is Harrison's Best. And uh, quite frankly, yes, even though it is a traditional best bitter, it is one of my best beers and it's, uh, it's only second to the vacant gesture in terms of sales and production. Very, very good beer indeed though. I don't know if I've shared the recipe for this one, but I may just do that in the future. So I'm gonna dive in and have a slurp, folks. Mm. Oh. That is excellent. Well, anyway guys, thanks for joining me on this vlog. Don't forget, please go to the description there and vote for us for North Knots Business Awards. We are in uh, artisan, um, artisan producers category, I think it is, and the hospitality category. And then while you're there, like I said, please, give a vote for Iron Tree Designs. They're in a separate category though, but uh, it will definitely help us, fingers crossed, pick up the award. And uh, yeah, cheers for tuning in guys. We'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna enjoy this pint of Best Bitter and uh, get ready for the weekend, because it is Friday after all. 
see you on the next one.